currently airing down to go on the Rim Rocker Trail, 160 miles from Montrose, Colorado to Moab, Utah. We're here with a few other rigs and this should be a lot of fun. This video is sponsored by 3-in-1 Brand. Oh, the dinger's still going. I feel like it will fix itself. <laughs> it does every now and again. Okay. Get the AC going. And we should set up our Garmin. Or at least start the tracking. All right, time to get going. Okay. Everyone's taken off. Oh, I love the ride after airing down. It's so much nicer. <laughs> What I love about these trips is you get to go into all these little ecosystems and things. Yeah, it looks like we got a little bit of a transition here from county to uh, the Uncompadre National Forest. Well, now it kind of looks like we know what we're doing. We got some mud on the truck for yeah, right two on. miles. Yeah, you know, when we get to Moab, we're definitely going to have to hose this off. There's magnesium chloride that they've sprayed down and I actually don't know anything about it. I'm assuming that it's going to be something that is like salt um, that is corrosive to the metal. So we better get under there once we get back to more of it and just power wash it all out. So one of the things we're doing while we run this trail is we're playing with a few different apps that we're trying out. One is Gaia. It goes on your smartphone. There is a subscription to it so you can download maps and things. And what we've done is downloaded the Rim Rocker Trail, so we can follow that on our stereo system, which has Apple CarPlay. So the red line is the trail. The other thing we're doing is we're running our Garmin inReach. So that is also, that's a GPS, but it's also a satellite communicator. So we can send text messages out. If we were to get injured or there is a serious problem, there's an SOS button to send out, send out search and rescue. And the other nice thing is we have family that if we want to get in touch or send pre-programmed messages to them, we can do that with the Garmin. I also added the Verizon cell coverage layer to our Gaia. So oh, we that's can right. see if there's cell coverage. Yeah, we've been monitoring that. Uh, it's a cool thing with Gaia, you can add map layers. And Kate added the Verizon cell coverage layer. I think there might be a pit toilet, so we should dump our, dump our toilet. Never pass up the opportunity to dump your toilet. Wiser words have not been spoken. There's not a lot of campsites in here, but there's a few. This looks like it'd be a nice place to camp. Yeah, and it's so much cooler up here. Oh, it's so nice. I think it was 90s in Montrose and nice and cool up here. But it's supposed to be 100-ish in Moab. Well, that won't be for a few more days. <laughs> Let's enjoy this while we can. Okay. Thank you for dumping. You're very welcome, my pleasure. Okay, <laughs> we're not that full. That pit toilet was absolutely disgusting. I'm not even. No, no. not worth it. Not worth it. Bumpy road. Yes, very. We decided to take a uh, side trail, check it out. Um, apparently there is a uranium mine out here, or old uranium mine. There was a lot of uranium mining in this area a long time ago. So it's a lot of history. I don't know if we'll actually get to see one in person, but some cool stuff out here.
So Kate was getting water from our auxiliary tank. It's a bit muddy down there, so what we have to do is gonna run it for a couple seconds to clear out the line. But otherwise, we use that and then we put it in our Berkey. And I think one important thing when you're on a trip like this is being completely self-sufficient and making sure you have enough water and you understand how long that water lasts. Because we have, how much, 42? 42 gallons, 26 in the camper. 11 in the tray and then another five gallon bladder so yeah we can shower every day do dishes every day <laughs> have plenty to drink cook and extra yeah so that'll last us more than the trip we like to be a little bit over prepared when it comes to the water yeah and being on the road since 2015 we've learned how to conserve water and make it last exactly all right i think it's about time to get back on the road enjoy your coffee <laughs> Continental Divide going along the top of the mountains. We've hit pavement. We have. So there are short sections of pavement between or along the trail. When you follow it, go through a town, this is gonna be Nucla. Nucla, get it? Nuclear, uranium mining. Hey, yeah, see, tie it all back together. We're not gonna air up because speed limit's only about 35 and we're going pretty slow anyway. We'll just pick up the trail again and keep on trekking. Making a pit stop in Nucleus. Here's fuel, country store, nice little break time. We just went through a couple obstacles that we didn't end up filming, of course, uh, <laughs> that without high clearance and possibly even good four-wheel drive, you would not make it through. So far, this has been pretty much two-wheel drive, well-graded roads up until you leave um, Nucleus. And, you know, here is the section you definitely need four-wheel drive and high clearance for. It definitely gets a bit narrow. Yes. So you will scrape the So there is a campground, established campground along the Rim Rocker. Uh, no charge, they do have a donations box, but it looks pretty nice and it's right along the river. All right, day one of driving in the books. Now we can set up camp and relax. I like that we're right by the water. It is warm though. Well, despite the heat, it's actually quite nice to stand in this little river next to our campground back there and have a nice cold beer. So cheers. And there's Kate. Well, good morning. Good morning. Apparently we are the late risers in the group. We are. Even though it's just after eight, walked around, asked everyone if they wanted coffee, and they're like, no, we've already had ours. We're not used to getting up early. <laughs> All right, well, I'm excited about today. Bob was saying that the trail from here out to Moab is gonna get a lot trickier, or at least that's what he what he's heard. A narrower trail, there's a good chance we're gonna put some more pinstriping on the truck and the camper. And, yeah. This magnesium chloride stuff, they were spraying on the road yesterday, is nasty. So yesterday when we pulled into camp, like this stuff on the exhaust, this is a great example. It was 
dried almost to like a concrete consistency and I was trying to peel it off and it was just like a rock. We wake up this morning, all of our rigs, this stuff has become muddy again. It's like it absorbed the water in the air and you can see it, it's like dripping down onto the ground. It went from hard to mud. All right, let's get the engine warmed up. Yes. Get the AC going. <laughs> Started. It's always a good sign. Always a good sign. So we started here yesterday. Did this whole bit, came through Nucla, and then we are camped here at the ballpark. And then today we're gonna do this, like a portion of this section through here, and then come across the Colorado Utah border, maybe look to camp somewhere in this neighborhood and then the rest of the way into Moab. But as you can see, the roads are quite a bit more uh, interesting from here on out, so we'll see. So we got to meet Jane. She is part of the Historic Society, and she, along with other volunteers, helped maintain and build out this campground. This place is really nice, and if you're doing the Rim Rocker Trail, definitely try to stay here and then throw a little donation in the box on your way. So along the Rim Rocker, there are mines, and this is remnants of a mine shaft that they've gated up, but it's cool to come down and see some of this old history. Oh, holy. I don't know if you can tell on camera, but this is a serious incline right here. This is four low, first gear. Just crawl. It's definitely been a fun piece of the trail. Yes. Wait. Oh, looks like we're gonna get some pinstriping. <laughs> this is fun. Mm -hmm. And it's more fun with people. Yes. Well, there is that, if you're out here alone, there's an anxiety thing that if you were to roll over or something were to happen, you're out here all by yourself and there's no cell coverage here. Who knew there was so much mining history back here? It's impressive. As Bob would say, this trail is starting to have a little bit of character. Yes. You're good on my end. All right. Plenty of room. Look at that. That is a really tight turn. And it's extremely steep. Well, we gotta get down to that road <laughs> in a very short distance. Well, four low, first gear, and just let Leo crawl his way down. He's doing great so far. Yay, Leo. How are our companions doing up there? Yeah, they're coming down. Day two has been quite long. Uh, sun's starting to not go down, but we're starting to get some shade on the trail, which makes it a little bit more difficult to see some of the rocks and things. But it's been a long day on the road. We've had a number of stops to check out mines, and views and things, but so far this has been a much more technical portion of the trail. Uh, definite four wheel drive stuff. Just a lot of fun. We're definitely earning our pinstripes. Yes, this is, an extremely narrow trail right now. 
and off camber sections where you're kind of leaning over the drop and it's a little nerve wracking. <laughs> but slow and steady. Another great place to camp for the night, but this is it for day two. I think we have about another 54 miles to go until we get to Moab. Um, but I think it's time to set up camp, have an ice cold cerveza and some dinner, another shower, and then call it a night. Yes, please. <laughs> Day three on the trail. We should make it to Moab today, about 54 miles. I'm just trying to get some of the grime off of the windshield. We got out into camp yesterday. We were looking over the camper and we definitely have some pinstriping on it now. So it's legit. One of the other things I'm doing today is with all the dirt, dust, and mud, our locks on these trays and bays on the flatbed have been getting all grimed up. And on some of them, I can't even get the key in. So I'm going around spraying three in one. This is their lock dry lube and the stuff is awesome. Spray it in there, key goes right in, lock works perfectly. So that's what I'm doing right now. Just needs a spray or two. And then, yep. It's better than new. It's like cemented in here. Oh, look how gross that is. Let's see if I can even get the key in. No, key won't go in. Now it's going in. There we go. Now it's working. Well, we better get on the road. Everyone's yeah. ready. Well, this stuff is awesome. So the cool thing about this trail is there are a bunch of like bailout points so if you had a mechanical issue or you just didn't want to continue on the trail, there are side trails where you can get back to the main highway and it's really easy. So that is nice because the last trip we went on, we were 80 miles from the nearest paved road. And here you're kind of paralleling one for quite a while. Well, I'm pretty sure the trailer that came from Moab did not take the rim rocker. <laughs> so let's see what's in store for us today. So far this morning, it's been smooth, nice graded roads, and then there is an offshoot that takes you straight back into Moab, but then this is a continuation of the Rim Rocker Trail, so it's about to get a lot more interesting. The trail has changed quite a bit since we first started this. This last section here, very narrow, very rocky. We're cruising along at about three to five miles an hour, if that.
This should be interesting. Yeah, we got a, another vehicle in the road. Gonna have some hauling scrapes along here. Well, I'm glad we finally found a place to turn past him. Yeah. Oh, lunch break. Yeah, we're going to take a little break, assess all the damage to the camper, which I'm assuming at this point is quite extensive. Uh, it'll just be cosmetic, but... Well, hopefully. Yeah. I, I need to go up and look at the solar panel. No. Yeah, I don't want to know. <laughs> So we've all decided to eject off of the trail. Uh, we're all taking a lot of damage on our the sides of our vehicles and campers. And we decided that at this point, let's head off. We've done almost the entire trail. And even the eject road here, this is Lackey, Lackey Canyon or Lackey Road, um, is still pretty rough, but should take us straight into this little town here and then we can hit Moab. See going up and down? It might be the front right tie rod. Um, it's loose, but the castle nut and locking pin are still on. Okay, so the, the bushing head into the knuckle of the steering knuckle. Yeah, that's our guess from just wiggling the wheel around. So is your steering really changed a lot, or is it just a little bit of change? I actually haven't noticed anything in the steering. It's just as we go over bumps, I'm hearing a loud clunk coming out of the suspension. Okay, that may or may not be that tie rod. Generally, tie rods don't give a clunk, but the, you'll just start getting squirrely uh, steering. So let's get down to 46, and we can give it a better look with maybe a flashlight or uh, uh, some, you know, a towel on the ground or something. Got it. Thank you back on a well-graded road. Oh, it feels so nice. <laughs> we definitely shook something off canter or something's going on. Yeah, something's loose. Well, I don't know if it's loose or something's rubbing. So the truck seems to be driving fine. It's just another thing. No problem. We really enjoyed this trail and it's been awesome. I would just say if you don't want to scratch up your vehicle or damage it, I would skip that last portion if you're coming from Montrose or the first per portion if you're coming from Moab. Oh, there's pavement. All right, time to air up the tires. <laughs> it's all you, my love. All right, you stay in here with the AC. Please to enjoy. Oh, I will. Make sure you get your hat. There you go. Everything is shifted back here. Got to get the, the by air out. We've got the, this is the Viair 450P, and I can air all the tires up from 35 to 65 in under 30 minutes. Good luck. Thank you. big thank you to Bob from Off-Road Safety Academy for leading us all out here. We had an awesome trip. What do you think? Do you think we're going to be able to get the cement stuff off? I think you need to wet everything first, give it a few minutes, and then scrub it off. Just come here, look at this. It's literally like cement. Well, it scraped your leg. Yeah, the backs of my legs. Look at that. All right, good luck. Thank you, let me grab my hat. Do you want to put some sandals on? That's a good idea. Well, that was a great trip. We've got a couple little things to repair. We've got to get this thing clean, but that is it for the rim rocker. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want to see more cool content, head on over to our website at wertherussos.com. See ya.